Hello and welcome to a new video on Travel Television. Today we are going to look into how we actually can draw animations on our little game and how we can interact uh, based on timers with certain things. So have fun! Okay, so we before we get into the code and look into how we actually can build an animation, um, let's take a look at the animation itself we want to render out. Um, so I have Blender open here and what I want to do is to add a little timer thingy to our game so we have something that we can show uh, when some action is taking place. Um, so I built a clock with two pointers. The animation we are going to render out is pretty simple. It is just the pointers wrapping around the clock. Um, the view angles for the animation are the same as for all the other images we already rendered. We have a 45 degree rotation on the z-axis and a 30 degree rotation on the x-axis downward. Um, don't get confused with my viewport here. I just yeah moved or rotated the whole scenery around so I actually can work better on the clock. Some considerations to keep in mind when you want to follow the approach. We need a loopable animation for the approach we're gonna take. Um, the reason for that is that the system we are going to build basically runs the animation continuously and when you don't have runnable anim or a loopable animation sorry and um, then you will have the problem that the image or the animation looks kind of funky because like you have some shift or something so make sure that your animation is actually loopable for our purpose we actually want to have a transparent background so remember in render properties to activate transparent in the film section but now to the really important point to the render settings we actually need First, we need to keep in mind that we need to render out all the images itself. We want to have the separate images. What I did here is to reduce the resolution to just render half. I also increased the step count because I don't want to render out 120 pictures. I just want every six frame. And then, um, yeah, just to make like basically the result a little easier to work with. Um, I also uh, reduce the color depth to 8 and added a little bit of compression and keep in mind to use RGBA because we want to have a transparent background. Okay, so I'm going to render out this animation now and then get to the next step. Okay, so the render is done. We have all the images exported and right here that we wanted to render. And what we, we, we need to do now is to create an image sprite or an image strip of all the frames, which basically means that we need to combine all those images alongside each other horizontally. So we have one big image basically of all the frames. To do that, I am going to use image magic. Um, you can download it somewhere. I will link it in the description below. Uh, it is available for most operating systems, so you shouldn't have any trouble to follow this step. Um, convert is the uh, conversion tool of image magic and what we are going to do is we uh, type plus append then we say we want to select every png image and the output should be a strip.png file so let's run that and see what the result is so what we created now is an image strip that we actually can work with so let's get into the code and actually build the animation so before we get into animations and build them and draw them, we first need to understand how time works in game engines or Law of 3 for that matter. Um, usually game engines don't really run at a certain FPS. They run as fast as they can, um, usually just limited by hardware or software. Um, but they usually have like a, a background timer framework or timing framework um, to be able to run stuff at a certain FPS. So for example, animations, you can't just run them as fast as possible. You really need to run them at a certain FPS so they don't look oversped um, and look quite nice. Um, so what we try to build now, before we actually get into an animation, we need some framework to be able to progress something at a certain rate of time. And we are going to use um, the law of update function for that. And there's one little thing we didn't talk about yet when it comes to law of update. 
Love update, same as draw, is called on every cycle, but love update actually receives an argument, and this argument is called dt. dt is just short for uh, delta time, and it's just the uh, time since the last update call in seconds. So we actually can use that to have some progression or meaningful progression in the life cycle and actually can do something to track or relate it to time. So what we are going to build now is a timer framework that actually allows us to progress something at a certain rate of time. Uh, for example, we know that we have an animation. This animation has 20 frames. Let's say the whole animation should be run within one second. So we need an, a 20 FPS that is trackable somehow. So we want to progress something, in our case the animation, every 1 20th of a second and we need a function for that. So I already prepared a timer module, so let's fill it with, with some content. Let's say a local timer, which is just a table, return timer. And then um, let's add a function, which we call timer every. Timer every should receive a time and a func. Then we need to track every timer we registered. So give it a little property. Let's call those every collection which is just an empty table for now. And what we want to do is we want to insert in this table self every collection. We want to insert a table and this table has three properties. We have current, which is time for the start. We have reset, which is also time. And we have func, which is func. <laughs> so we, add, uh, we are going to add this table with the three properties because the approach will be that. We going to iterate over the whole collection each time update is called. So function also gets an update method, which receives the delta t from the love update method. We are going to iterate over the whole collection and each time we are going to subtract dt from time we have set in current. If current then hits zero or lower, we know that the time is done or the timer is done and we should call function. But we also need to reset the timer because we want to call it every time the, the timer is done basically. So that's why we have reset because we are going to take reset and set the time that is saved in here to current again after this is done. So let's just do it. Maybe it explains it a little better. So we have a four, in this case, our timer in pair self every collection do. And in this case, we say D current equals T current minus DT. That's the subtraction. If t current is lower, which will happen at some point, lower than zero, lower equals zero maybe, then we want to t current to reset current basically to t reset, and we want to call the function. Okay, so let's integrate that in main actually. So let's say timer update dt. And then we need to create something a little more because, um, yeah, we need to bring it to draw somehow to actually show something. So what I'm going to do now is I will create a new canvas. Graphics, new canvas. And I'm in here, I'm going to say love graphics draw can. And then let's add the timer. Um, maybe first even pull out the width and height of graphics, get pixel dimensions. And then let's register our timer, timer every one, or let's say one second for just uh, demonstration purposes. Let's say function end. And in our case, we actually want to say love graphics set canvas, actually get canvas which is like the reset. Then we want to say love graphics set canvas to our 
other canvas basically. So that basically just means that we change the thing on which we draw to our certain object. Then we say love graphics print hello at math random width and math random height. This basically just draws at a random location somewhere on the canvas hello. Then we going to say love graphics set canvas to reset and maybe even set the color before we print. So love graphics set color to white. So we actually see something. And in here we, well, actually let's do it like that. So what now should happen is when I start the game, we should see that every second a new hello is added somewhere on our canvas. So let's try that. And as you can see, every second hello is drawn. So now that we have an actual timer function we can use um, to progress our animation, let's build the animation. So now that we have our timer function, we actually can write our animation module. So let's start with return function image and total frames. This will be our constructor. In here we say local animation is a table. We return animation at the end. Um, animation should have some properties. It should have the image, image. It should have the total frames, total frames. And it also should have a current frame, which starts at zero. Okay. Um, so first let's implement maybe the function we actually need a timer for, which we might call uh, progress, progress, um, which should just progress through the animations. And we are doing that by setting the current frame, which is always the current frame <laughs> um, in this function. And we are doing that by saying self current, current frame should be self current current frame plus one and we want to be sure that we start over again when we are done with the animation so let's do modulo self total frames okay so that's it to progress through the animation so let's add a draw function as well draw should receive x and y of course so we know where to draw and to draw actually our little animation we need something that is called a quad um, a quad is basically a subsection of the image it is created by law of graphics new quad it receives x y width height and the original image dimensions so image width image height both of them can be set by using self image get dimensions the x and y uh, is for our case wait let's let me format that a little bit okay so first maybe let's determine how wide every frame actually is let's say self image oh with self image get with divided by self total frames and that should be with time self to a current frame so that is how we actually progress through the animation when current frame is progressed with the progress function it will increase and then we just move along our image strip to pick out the next image y will be zero because we don't have like a two-dimensional image matrix we just have a strip uh, width should be width and height should be self image get height Okay, so let's save that as a variable and then let's say love graphics draw. We want to draw the image, but we all only want to draw the subsection which we define in the quad. X and Y is provided by the function. We don't want to rotate it and let's keep the scaling uh, out for now as well. Then let's use our animation and see if it works um so let's remove those let's remove everything here let's remove this as well and first local animation require animation 
and then let's set, let's set it up local clock um, is animation now we need to require the image and don't get confused i needed to um, convert the strip we created earlier a little smaller because love had some problems with loading them i'm not sure why um, but i when when i scaled it uh, smaller it worked again so just don't get confused when i use a different image name now new image where we say clock strip small.png and the total frames is 20 and in our timer function we say every 20th of a second we want the clock to progress and in draw we just say clock draw at the upper left corner so let's try it out if it actually works and as you can see now, our animation is running continuously, maybe a little fast, but um, you get the point. And that's how you do animations. So let's integrate it now in our little game. Okay. Okay. So let's look into how I integrated the animation uh, in our game. Maybe first the things I added to our timer module, I added another function, which is called after that should register a function that is called just once after a certain timer is expired. Um, to the animation, I added the possibility to um, fetch the width and the height of one of one frame. Um, to the draw function, I added actually scale and those yeah, those two functions and the, the attribute is just necessary to actually place it properly on a tile. Um, to the asset manager, I added two new functions, the add animation and the get animation. Add animation just accept the name, a image and a total frame count and will uh, create an animation and already register and every callback in the requested uh, frames per second or in the, in the requested update time with the requested update time and then progress through the animation. Um, game wise, I just added a new interaction, which is mouse release. So when a mouse button is released, we could also check which mouse button, but that's not relevant for now. Uh, when a mouse button is released, we iterate over the whole tile map. So over each, every tile. Um, and we check if the tile is hovered. If the tile is hovered, we call the cutdown function on the tile. The cutdown function on the tile just locks the tile. So it just um, basically sets locked to true. So it can't be called twice because when the second time would be try to call it, we see, all right, uh, it is already locked and then we return. And we register a after callback after one second to release the lock and actually to remove the asset, which is the tree image that is drawn on the tile. And the draw function of the tile, I added a check if the tile is actually locked. And if this is the case, we actually fetch the clock animation and draw it on the tile. So we see that it's basically blocked and can't be used for now. So let's jump into the game and see how it looks. And as you can see now, we actually can click on any tile and remove the asset after one second. And we can't click a tile twice. It just works once. Okay, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching as always. Um, next time we might look into actual like game content. Um, we might add a functionality where we actually track um, yeah, resource collection and maybe a little user interface. Let's see. Thanks for watching. Bye.